You know, the thing that always makes me cry that I had to go through this disease while the other five didn't. They got everything that I, that I got. But I, I had to fight this thing and still have to fight this thing. We're all right now mourning the passing of Matthew Perry. This video is in no way meant to be disrespectful to anyone. We sympathize here for the family, for everyone that's involved. I'm just gonna take a look at some of the body language that Matthew exhibited in one of his last interviews that I could find within the last year. So let's get going. And my mother walking in and taking all sort of the glory because she was beautiful and people just knew her and and I was like five feet behind her, and all I wanted was for her to turn around and, you know, f focus on me and like be with be with me. You took me, and it's I, I want I, I want I want your company. I want you to help help me. I'm a kid, you know, and uh, she never really did that. I want you to notice here that the face that he's making is universal across every continent. This one is called contempt. Notice the one side of the mouth goes up. It's not symmetrical. It's not on both sides. It's not a smile. It's one side of the mouth going up and the eyes do not look happy. This is called contempt. He's not showing contempt for his mother, who this is about. He's showing contempt for the situation where he didn't get the attention that he wanted specifically from his mother. He simply wanted to be acknowledged and he didn't get that. That's me. I can't believe it. This book was written in 1939, and it's about me. It's about the guy who drove to the liquor store at quarter to two so he could drink alone. It's about all these habits. It's about why my reaction was different than the Murrays when we drank that day when I was 14. We were all 14. You'll notice in this clip there's a lot of head nodding and they're on the syllable. Usually we use our hands to do what are called illustrators and these land on the points that we're trying to make. But he does it with his head. When you're doing it like this and you're making eye contact like he's doing, you're trying to emphasize a point. He means exactly what he's saying. But on the other hand, it meant one day at a time I have to stop drinking forever. And this is after he has realized that alcoholism is actually a disease. All these dependencies are a disease. He says, I'll have to stop drinking forever. I have to stop drinking forever. Explanation point on that point. But on the other hand, it meant one day at a time, I have to stop drinking forever. And I thought, well, this is the only way I've ever enjoyed anything in the 20th century. In this one, notice he shakes his face like this. He's saying no, because he doesn't like what it's done to him. Both his shoulders come up, and we know that shoulder shrugs, when it's both at the same time, mean generally, I don't blank. I don't know, I don't have an answer, I don't know what to say, I don't know how to explain. It just simply means I don't blank. So he's shaking his head no, his shoulders come up saying I don't know why and how, and his hands are here and they're open. And when your hands are open and you're not trying to do it, when it comes naturally, when your hands are open and they're in the area of your chest to your shoulders, this is generally called the truth plane. It's not excitement and it's not where you're trying to withhold something when you keep your hands down low. No, it's right here, about chest level or shoulder level. This is called the truth plane plane and when you don't think about it so you're not trying to do it and you do it anyway naturally his hands are open meaning that he's not concealing anything so he's trying to tell the truth he has no idea he's never had a way in the 20th century to have fun without alcohol he doesn't know why he's just saying that that's the way that it's always been and i have to give it up or you know it's going to kill me so i i i gave it up for a long period of time and we'll talk about this, I'm sure, but... Look at this picture, his hand is open. As we've already seen, he's not concealing anything. His face is down to the side. His eyes are pinched together and his lips are coming up and closing. He's getting to the point of disgust. Not quite there yet, but you'll see it here in a minute as he doesn't like what's just been said or what's about to be said. You know, the insanity of having another drink a couple of years later and starting this whole thing all over again. 
And this is an exaggerative hand gesture. You can't believe that he's starting this whole process over again. When people are dealing with dependence and we're dealing with addiction, sometimes they don't understand why does it keep happening? And I'm the one who keeps doing it. So he's simply saying, I can't believe it, but here we go, starting all over again. And I know logistically, I stopped it here while well, he's holding his ear because he said, I know logistically, he's about to admit that he knows exactly what drinking does to him, but he does it anyway. And so as he prepares to say it, he does what's called a self-soothing gesture. He's grabbing his ear, he's pulling on it. Sometimes we self-soothe by rubbing our face, by stroking our chin. We take our hands and place them on our laps and we'll rub our palms on our laps. This is self-soothing. Some people rub their chest. Some people put their hands together and do one of these things. Self-soothing gesture. And he's about to say and admit that he knows what it's gonna do to him to keep drinking, but he does it anyway. So he's soothing himself as he is saying it. And I know logistically exactly what's gonna happen and I still do it. Um, Just like I said, he's now stroking his beard, self-soothing. And I couldn't understand that. I could not stop unless I was locked away somewhere. And at times I would call drug dealers and have drugs brought in to the place I was locked up in because I was desperate and begging for Drugs. I stopped it here because I want you to see his eyebrows are up. When we raise our eyebrows, it's because we're trying to draw attention to ourselves and to the words that we are saying at the time. He's trying to bring really focused attention on the fact that he's been into treatment. And what does he do? He calls his drug dealers and he has them bring him drugs. And then he goes and he pushes his face together as he says, I was begging. And begging for drugs and then what does he say that they bring into him drugs and his eyebrows go up again now watch his face as he talks about that alcohol doesn't care about his fame or his money look at his face and alcoholism did not care that i was on friends and alcoholism did not care about any of that shit. they just alcoholism wants you alone it wants you sick and then it wants to kill you He's still doing that nod, it wants you alone, it wants you sick, and it wants to kill you. And look at this picture when he says, it wants to kill you. His eyes are drilling a hole in what he is looking at. His brow is furrowed, his lips are pinched shut, his nose is not contracted. This is not disgust, this is the face of anger. He's angry at alcohol, he's angry at what addiction does to people like him and like you and me. Now watch in his next clip as he is disgusted by describing his own body. He's talking about how he was strung out on cocaine, alcohol, opiates, you name it. He was on it and this is why he was so thin. We all remember Chandler being, being as skinny as a broomstick in many of the episodes and in many of the seasons. And he's saying he couldn't even stand to look at himself because he knows that when he was thin like that, that that was one of the heights of his journey of darkness that we call addiction. I weighed 128 pounds. I was on Friends getting watched by 30 million people and that's why I can't watch the show because I was like brutally thin. Now this last clip I wanna warn you ahead of time, it gets pretty emotional. This is raw and it's real. You know, the thing that always makes me cry and I hope I, I, hope I don't cry here is that it's not there. Notice the freeze frame, what is his face? Do you remember? It's contempt. He's starting to get emotional. His eyes are beginning to cloud up in water. You'll notice as we continue, his eyes get really glossy and they get red. His nose starts to have mucous membranes starting to get inflamed and things are happening inside there as well as you'll hear his voice choking up as his chest contracts and his lungs aren't pushing out enough air to finish words. Watch. It's not, it's not fair. It's not fair. It's not fair. That I had to go through, that I had to go through this disease while the other five didn't. They got everything that I, that I got. But I, I had to fight this thing and still have to fight this thing. So just to end this on a good note, there are people that will help you and get their help. It doesn't go away. It never goes away. This last picture, I want you to look at it. Look at what he's doing. Look where his hands are. They're in the truth plane. They're open. He's got them pointed toward you. 
Remember what we said, when you don't think about it and you're not trying to fake it, and you just do it naturally, when your hands are around chest level and they're open, it means you're not concealing anything. He's not concealing anything and he's got them pointed toward you. He's trying to tell you that he cares. Look at his head. Look at this picture. What's his head doing? His head is tilting. What does that mean? It means that you have affection and compassion for somebody. If I look at you and I'm listening to a story that's heartbreaking and I go, oh, really? That will not carry as much compassion as me going, oh, really? See how my head tilts? When we tilt, it means we're showing compassion. We're showing love. So when you look at this last freeze frame of him as he ends the video, as he ends this interview, his, his hands are open. He's not concealing anything. They're pointed toward you. His head is tilted. He's showing compassion and love to you. This is a man who doesn't want anyone else to ever have to deal with what he has been through with this disease called addiction. Do me a favor, if you're still here, hit like, hit subscribe. It will help the channel out. And also, if you're here, click on one of these other videos. Check out some more body language, some more psychology. I would appreciate it. And guys, listen, this is a serious subject, but I will be back very soon in the very next video. I'll see you then.